Saint Longinus is the centurion who pierced the side of our Lord while he was hanging on the cross. Saint Longinus, who was nearly blind, was healed when some of the blood and water from Jesus fell into his eyes. It was then he exclaimed, Indeed, this was the Son of God. Once upon a time, in a small village near the city of Jerusalem, there lived a Roman soldier named Longinus. He had a minor eye affliction, but this didn't stop him from doing anything in his life. Longinus the Centurion, a Roman soldier, served in Judea under the command of the governor, Pontius Pilate. He was known for his bravery and strict adherence to the laws of the Roman Empire. However, one day he found himself assigned to a task that would change his life forever. He was to be a part of a group of soldiers tasked with the responsibility of crucifying a man named Jesus of Nazareth. Longinus approached the task with his usual discipline and determination. But as he watched Jesus being crucified, he was struck by the man's calm demeanor and the love he showed even in his final moments. Something within Longinus stirred and he began to question the purpose of his mission. As the hours passed, Longinus found himself drawn to the man on the cross, unable to look away from the sight of him. He couldn't understand why this man's death seemed to hold such significance. It was then that something miraculous happened. As Jesus breathed his last, Longinus watched as the sky darkened and an earthquake shook the land. In that moment, Longinus knew that he had witnessed something truly special, and he was filled with a sense of awe and wonder. Overcome with emotion, he approached the cross, and using a spear, he pierced the side of Jesus as he was instructed. This was to make sure the prisoner was dead. Blood and water flowed out, and Longinus was immediately overcome with a sense of guilt and remorse. Longinus, who was nearly blind, was healed when some of the blood and water from Jesus fell into his eyes. It was then he exclaimed, Indeed, this was the Son of God. As he stood there, Lost in thought, a voice spoke to him, telling him that he was now a part of something greater than himself. After the crucifixion and burial of the Savior, Longinus stood watch with his company at the sepulcher of the Lord. These soldiers were present at the all-radiant resurrection of Christ. The Jews bribed them to lie and say that his disciples had stolen away the body of Christ. But Longinus and two of his comrades refused to be seduced by the Jewish gold. They also refused to remain silent about the miracle of the resurrection. Longinus was overcome with emotion and, unable to resist the call of the voice, he left his life as a Roman. Having come to believe in the Savior, the soldiers received baptism from the apostles and decided to leave military service. Saint Longinus left Judea to preach about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in his native land, Cappadocia, and his two comrades followed him. He encountered many challenges and obstacles along the way, but he remained steadfast in his mission, 
always sharing the message of love and hope that he had come to believe in so strongly. Years passed, and Longinus became known as a revered figure in the Christian faith. His story inspired countless others to follow in his footsteps, spreading the word of love and compassion to all who would listen. Hearing that Longinus was in Cappadocia, Pilate dispatched a company of soldiers to Cappadocia to kill Longinus and his comrades. Sorry for interrupting the video. I am here to deliver a quick message. If you think our channel has given you $5 worth of knowledge, then can you take a moment to make a donation? Please don't skip the video. 99.8% of our viewers simply skip this, or many think they will donate later and forget. If you make a small donation now, then we can keep making good videos like this one. You can choose to support us through Patreon or make a one-time donation through PayPal. The links are given in the description box below. If you are one of our rare donors, we warmly thank you. You have shown the world access to good content matters to you. Thanks again, and God bless. The fiery words of Longinus and his disciples, who had actually witnessed the great events in Judea, swayed the hearts and minds of the Cappadocians. Christianity began to spread throughout the city and the surrounding villages. When the Jewish elders learned of this, they persuaded Pilate to send a company of soldiers to Cappadocia to kill Longinus and his comrades. When the soldiers arrived at Longinus's village, the former centurion himself came out to meet the soldiers and took them to his home. After a meal, the soldiers revealed the purpose of their visit, not knowing that the master of the house was the very man whom they were seeking. Then Longinus and his friends identified themselves. He told the startled soldiers to carry out their duty. The soldiers wanted to let the saints go and advised them to flee, but they refused to do this, showing their firm intention to suffer for Christ. They were taken back to the palace where they were sentenced to be beheaded for treason. The holy martyrs were beheaded, and their bodies were buried at the place where the saints were martyred. The head of St. Longinus, however, was sent to Pilate. Pilate gave orders to throw the martyr's head in a trash. The soldiers obeyed, and the head was thrown into a trash heap outside the city walls. After a while, a certain blind widow from Cappadocia arrived in Jerusalem with her son to pray at the holy places and to ask that her sight be restored. After becoming blind, she had sought the help of physicians to cure her, but all their efforts were in vain. The woman's son became ill shortly after reaching Jerusalem, and he died a few days later. The widow grieved for the loss of her son, who had served as her guide. One night, Saint Longinus appeared to her. He comforted her and told her that she would see her son in heavenly glory. He also told her that she would receive her sight back. 
he told her to go outside the city walls, and there she would find his head in a great pile of refuse. The woman sought the help of a guide to reach the location. She immediately started digging through the rubbish heap. As soon as she touched the martyr's head, the woman received her sight. She glorified God and St. Longinus. Taking up the head, she brought it to the place she was staying and washed it. The next night, St. Longinus appeared to her again, this time with her son. They were surrounded by a bright light, and St. Longinus said, Woman, behold the son for whom you grieve. See what glory and honor are his now, and be consoled. God has numbered him with those in his heavenly kingdom. Now take my head and your son's body and bury them in the same casket. Do not weep for your son, for he will rejoice forever in great glory and happiness. The woman carried out the saint's instructions and returned to her home in Cappadocia. Once she had been overcome by grief for her son, but now her sorrow was transformed into joy. She had sought healing for her eyes and also received healing of her soul. Although many curious legends about Longinus make it difficult to verify actual truths, we can be sure of one important fact. We can celebrate with certainty that the heart of one particular soldier was transformed. Saint Longinus openly glorified God before his demeaning comrades with a profound declaration of belief and outward conversion. Theologians associate the water and blood that flowed from Jesus' side with the waters of baptism and the blood of Christ we receive in the Eucharist, sacraments that constitute us as a church. Saint Longinus, therefore, stands as a model for Christians. We too seek conversion by encountering the water and blood that flow from Christ, by renewing our baptismal promises and participating in the Eucharist. O oh, Saint Longinus, you were chosen as the venerable gatekeeper and were granted the gift of discernment by the Lord, an eyewitness of God's miracle who glorified the resurrected Christ. To your death, you remained Christ's soldier, and for Christ you gave your head. Pray for us, therefore, O Saint Longinus, so that being inspired by your example and assisted by your prayers, we may live a holy life, die a happy death, and reach eternal life to praise and thank God in heaven with you. I ask you to pray to God this special request, if it be His holy will. Amen.